When I was a kid, my friends and I would set up figurines on a battlefield and pretend they would come alive at night. Invariably, when we woke up the next day, nothing had moved, but it was fun nonetheless. These plastic figurines were made using plastic injection molds, but today, highly detailed figurines are made using 3D printing technology. So sure, the battle scene looks real until you really pay attention to the details. But what if I told you that 3D printing technology has the potential to not only print in great detail, but at the cellular level? At a time not too far in the future, 3D printing technology will be able to print full bones. The applications of this are endless. Soldiers suffering from war wounds would be given a new lease on life. 3D printers have gained a lot of attention and appreciation over the years. However, they've been around since the 1980s. A Japanese doctor, Dr. Hideo Kodama, was the first person to develop a prototype. A few years later in 1986, an individual named Charles Hull developed the first patent for stereolithography. Stereolithography is a technique that uses layer-by-layer -layer printing to develop a 3D model or sample. In 1988, at the University of Texas, Carl Deckard introduced another 3D technology. SLS technology works by fusing together powder grains via laser. Soon after, co-founder of Stratasys Incorporated, Scott Crump filed a patent for Fused Deposition Modeling, or FDM. In less than 10 years, three main technologies that would serve as the basis for 3D printing had been invented. 3D printing as we know it was born. The 1990s was also the decade that introduced a new revolution for medicine. This was the decade when 3D printers brought attention to engineered organs. In the year 2000, the first 3D printed working kidney was developed and transplanted into a patient. In 2005, the very first high-definition color 3D printer was launched. A few years later, in 2008, the very first 3D prosthetic limb was made. Today, many prosthetics have been created and used around the world. Today, 3D printing has evolved from its humble origins of printing plastic toys to the complex printing of human tissue using biomaterials, with potential applications in the medical field. Scientists are now able to 3D print different tissues of the human body, such as kidney cells, liver cells, and cardiac cells that are even able to beat like a real heart. Let's talk about an 83-year-old woman who got her disease jaw replaced with a 3D printed one. She was unable to speak or swallow due to her ailment, but after her surgery, she was able to return to a normal life. Surgeons and engineers from Belgium and the Netherlands worked together to make this possible. Belgian company Layerwise printed the 3D jaw using powder titanium and the patient's original jaw as a reference. The 3D model was then coated with a bioceramic bone material to ensure that it was not rejected by the patient's body. The actual surgery took place in Sittard, a city in the southeastern region of the Netherlands. This crossover between fields, engineering and medicine gave the patient a new chance at living a normal life. This story took place in early 2012, and since then, this technology has evolved even further. It is by no means perfect yet, but the possible applications are numerous and very exciting for potential patients. One of these applications is in facial reconstruction. The importance of the development of this technology can be exemplified in the case of Cameron Underwood, a factory worker from California. After years of battling with depression and substance abuse, Cameron took a gun to his chin and pulled the trigger. Against all odds, Cameron survived this event. However, his face would never look as it once did, damaging all structures from his eyes down. Additionally, Cameron would have to rely on a feeding tube to eat, a hole in his neck to breathe, and deal with difficulty speaking. That is, until 3D printing became an available technology for face transplantation. The surgery that would give Cameron his life back entailed the perfect match of a donor face and an extensive team of doctors using the utmost precision. This is where 3D printing comes into play. A 3D printing company used a technique, essentially reversing CAT scan technology, to produce a model of Cameron's face to aid with the planning of the surgery. Additionally, cutting guides were printed to ensure that exact cuts would be made during the actual surgery. Since the process of transferring the donor material to Cameron would need to occur quickly upon the death of the donor, all 3D printing of the facial tissue specific to the donor and Cameron would need to be produced in a short time span and transported to the doctors. Fortunately, the surgical team and 3D printers were able to practice seven times on cadavers before performing the final surgery on Cameron, a success as you can see. 
Though the surgery is still in the experimental stages, Cameron isn't alone in his experience. Katie Stubblefield and Andy Sandness are just two of the other public cases demonstrating the application of improvements in facial transplants and 3D printing to support the procedure. So we've seen lots of advances in 3D printing technology over the past couple decades, but what can we expect in the next decade to come? Outside of medical applications, 3D printing is being employed in the production of cars, but most remarkably, astronauts are finding ways to use 3D printing to make food. Cornell University is the leader in this latest advancement in 3D technology. It's come a long way since it first began and continues to develop at an incredible speed. With this in mind, how far do you think that this technology will evolve in the next decade? How about the next century? If this video piqued your interest and you would like to learn more about Cameron Underwood, Katie Stubblefield, and Andy Sandness, please visit the links below in the description. Thank you.